One thing we've seen about Jesus as we've gone through John's gospel is that he is great at feeding. He's great at providing for his people exactly what they need and in huge quantities. Uh, you think back to the first sign miracle that Jesus did in John chapter two, the wedding at Cana, where they run out of wine and Jesus steps up and provides more wine than anyone can drink. Or the feeding of the 5,000 in John chapter six, when again, everyone is hungry and needing feeding and Jesus provides more bread and more fish than they could possibly eat. Uh, even in John 10, Jesus pictures himself as, if you remember, a, a good shepherd who provides abundant pasture for his sheep. And now here in John 21, our passage for this week, here is Jesus again providing abundantly, abundant food for his people, everything they need. But as we've gone through John's gospel, hopefully we've also seen that when Jesus provides food, it's not just an end in itself. No, those miracles, John 2 and John 6, uh, they are um, signposts or signs, that's the word that John uses, signs that, that point beyond themselves. So that we're not meant to read those miracles and think, oh, maybe Jesus is gonna give me uh, a luxurious lifestyle and everything I could ever need, materially speaking. Now that's the mistake those people who run around after him uh, looking for more bread make. Uh, no, Jesus is saying, John is saying, these miracles are signposts to an even deeper, even richer, even more profound reality the feeding that we really need, the promise of eternal life in Jesus Christ. And last week in John chapter 20, we saw that the resurrection of Jesus, that final sign miracle, is the fulfilment of all of those things. Now, the resurrection gives us life, eternally speaking. And, and when Jesus is there with Mary in the garden, do you remember what he says to her? He says, I'm returning to my father and your father. All of a sudden, the perfect love relationship that the Father and the Son have is one that is given to us if we're followers of Jesus Christ, eternal life in his name. And you might have thought that John 20 would serve as a really nice climax and finale to the gospel. Uh, John records the resurrection and everything that follows it and then uh, writes down his little purpose sentence there to sum up what he's been trying to do. And you might have thought he'd put a full stop and then write the end. But then John 21 comes along. It's a bit of a lesser known chapter, to be honest, but John is very intentional in putting it in. Because John 21 gives us an answer to a question that should still be lingering in our minds. That being, how are we going to get fed? That is how are you and I here in 21st century East London, how are we gonna receive this eternal life, this feeding that Jesus promises? Well, if you remember in John 14 to 16, the upper room discourse between Jesus and his disciples before he heads to his death, we saw Jesus there promising that they would be the guys who would start that process. He would give them his spirit to equip them and, and enable them to remember everything that he said so that his words of life could get passed down to us. But the last time we saw the Apostle Peter was in chapter 18, standing by a charcoal fire manifestly unable to witness to Jesus. Ironically, Jesus is in the, the high priest's house, bearing witness like he's been doing and saying, I'll just ask those who have been with me, they will be able to tell you what I've said. But there on the outside is Peter denying Jesus, incapable of witnessing to him. And in fact, three times denying Jesus. So that we're left thinking, well, are these guys really capable of doing this? Can I rely on their witness to Jesus Christ? Will that give me the food that I need, spiritually speaking? And honestly, John chapter 21 doesn't start very promisingly, does it? John tw chapter 21 starts with uh, Peter and the other disciples in the night time. Symbolically, night is not a good time in John's gospel. It speaks of darkness and of evil. And Peter, leading the troop enthusiastically, is still completely incapable of feeding them. We are not heading into John chapter 21 thinking everything is fine and dandy as far as the disciples are concerned. And so here's the question as you head into John chapter 21. The question is this. Will we end this gospel confident that God has given us everything we need to be fed as Jesus's sheep. Enjoy reading John 21.